Another freezing night in Australia. I really miss central heating and double glazing. You know what else is cold? Getting a ATI Radeon 9200 for Christmas. Under Windows XP, the performance is really basic. You can only use low resolution, old games, or you have to lower the settings. Under Windows 98, they do much better. They have issues with supporting palletized textures and table fog. Now with the table fog, we learned that there's a registry tweak, but the success rate is hit and miss depending on the game. A few days ago, I searched through one of my boxes of video cards and this Radeon 9250 stood out. It has double the memory chips compared to the other cards. There was another surprise for me and that was enough to put a video together and test out this video card. Also, I need your help. I'm stuck in Shogo, so have a look and let me know down below in the comments. Let's put together a test system. We have a Gigabyte Socket 754 main board. Now, recently we had some issues with this one with an ATI Radeon video card, but I figured out the solution. You need to go into the BIOS, press Ctrl F1 to access the hidden options and then disable the onboard graphics. I'm also disabling other resources, for example, SATA controller, audio, Ethernet, zero, parallel, all those devices, we don't need them. The processor is an AMD Athlon 64 3400+, and we're using an AMD boxed cooler. We have 256 megabytes of DDR400 memory. I'm using the VIA chipset drivers directly from the Gigabyte website. This one will also activate DMA mode, so you don't need to go into the device manager and do it yourself. I'm stepping up with the Sound Blaster g 2 ZS. This is one of the nicest sound cards you can use for Windows 98. And we're using Joseph's drivers with the VXD version and it sets you up with various control panels like the speeder settings and the EAX console. For storage, we have the winning combination of the GoTech USB floppy emulator as well as the StarTech SATA 2 ID adapter and we're using a 32 gigabyte SanDisk SSD. And here we have some ATTO disk benchmarks. Performance is outstanding. I'm installing Windows 98 SE. You can grab the ISO from the WinWorld website. I've made myself an automated installation file. There's a video for you to check out if you're interested. That way it installs very quickly without me having to do things manually. And here we can see the second surprise. The GPU is identified as a Radeon Mobility 9200 or M9 Plus GPU. In terms of specifications, it's identical to the other Radeon 9200 or 9250 cards that I have lying around. Even the clock speed is 240 megahertz, the same as all the other cards I have. With the memory, a nice surprise. This is where double D memory chips comes into play. We have a 128 bit memory interface. That means much faster memory performance. However, unfortunately the RAM speed is only 166 megahertz, whereas most of the other Radeon 9200 cards have the RAM running at 200. Still, we should see a nice performance boost. So let's do some benchmarking. I'm comparing two cards. The regular Radeon 9200 with the 64-bit interface, but with the RAM running at 200 megahertz against this 9250. And here we have GL Quake, and we can see, yeah, across the board, the performance is improved at 1600 by 1200, for example, we're now getting 94.9 FPS, that is beautiful. And we can see a similar performance improvement with Expendable. At the lower resolution, the CPU is holding things back a little bit, but once we crank up the resolution, we can see a gap between the two cards. And here, even at 1600 by 1200, 80.1 FPS, fantastic. A real shame about the low memory speed. I would love to see what it can do with some faster RAM. The RAM chip has 60 nanoseconds, that means 166 megahertz per specifications. And now let's check out some games. For this video, I was actually really looking forward to playing some games. And what I'm doing now is I'm taking copies of the save games. And going forward in future projects, I will, yeah, 
rotate through the games, play a little bit more. That way I'm not just rushing through benchmarks, but I'm also, yeah, actually playing games and I will share what I'm thinking. This is Tachyon on the Fridge. I started playing this a few videos ago. It launched in the year 2000 from Novologic. They did heaps of flight sim games, including the famous Comanche Maximum Overkill. Previously, we were framed for some terrorist bombing of a uh, station. And yeah, we got exiled to the fringe and not allowed to return home. That's where the name Tachyon the Fringe comes from. And yeah, I'm playing with the Thrustmaster T16000M joystick. That's a beautiful joystick for this game, by the way. The game is configured at 800 by 600 resolution today. It runs silky smooth. I have enabled V-Sync for a consistent frame rate and in the game options, I also enabled EAX for the audio. It really is a slick game. The voice acting is excellent. You can choose missions from like a mission computer, like escorting ships, rescuing a ship that's under attack and or clearing minefields and so on. And I played another three missions and I believe at some point you have to pick which side you want to continue on in, in regards to the plot, but I didn't get too far. But yeah, so far I'm really enjoying it. When I got uh, put to the fringe, basically you start off with a really basic ship, very simple laser. You can upgrade only the, uh, the aim assist to help you with shooting, but you don't have an afterburner yet. So starting from the, from the bottom, so to speak. I think the graphics hold up nicely. Some of the assets, the resolution is a little bit on the low side, but really once you engage in a dogfight, uh, those details, you know, doesn't really matter too much. The, yeah, the voice acting is beautiful. There's a nice atmosphere and I can't wait to play more of this game. You can grab it on either GOG or Steam, but I buy it from GOG because it's DRM free and I gave up on Steam when they stopped supporting XP and Vista, that was the end. They locked me out of all my game library that are accumulated, so I'm not gonna buy another game from Steam out of principle. And what you do, you install the GOG copy on your modern machine and then just copy the folder across, run the executable, that's it, off you go. The other game I was really looking forward to playing some more is Shogo Mobile Armor Division. It's basically an FPS game, but you are playing in a big mech suit and the graphics are also well done. It only supports 16-bit colors, so we get some dithering and the textures can sometimes look a bit rough and raw. A Voodoo 3 will probably render this game better than a Radeon, but really, it's not a big deal. I didn't see too much banding going on and the assets, everything looks pretty good. In a previous video, I had some flickering going on. So the workaround is to go into the advanced options and enable triple buffering. Apart from that, everything is maxed out and it also supports EAX, which the Audigy 2 ZS does beautifully. Here I'm playing with mouse and keyboard. Unfortunately, GOG didn't map the keys for modern gaming, so you definitely want to uh, reconfigure WASD for some nice FPS gaming controls. And I haven't found a good mapping for the right mouse button yet. You also have to map the mouse button, so that's a little bit annoying. Uh, GOG could, could spend some attention with such details here. I progressed nicely in the storyline. There's lots of communication and radio chatter happening, helping you along the way. If you press F1, it will tell you the objectives, what you have to do. And this is where I got stuck. I got to an area where there are some shafts and you had to take out some uh, pump, heat pump station first. It will then deactivate some ventilation, some, 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 some fans. And then you need to drop down a shaft and there's a, I can see there's an entry and through that entry you get to another shaft. But there's something going on with the gravity or the physics. I just can't get low enough to go into that tunnel. I keep bouncing up and down and I'm not sure what's going on. 
I have enabled VSync, so I don't think it's a speed related issue, but it could be. The clock speed might be too high or maybe I missed something, maybe I need to pick up an item or something. If you know what I'm talking about, please let me know. I want to continue playing this game. So what is my verdict? Should you rush out and buy one of these Radeon cards? Well, in most cases they will find you. Uh, in a previous video I called them the ATI Cockroach video card because they just appear in some random boxes, some random bundles that you buy from eBay and yeah, there you go. There's a, another Radeon 9250, at least that's uh, how it was for me and I think I have five or six of them now. But yeah, I never paid attention to the memory modules. So on this one we have eight in total, four on each side, whereas on this card we only have two on each side, four in total. So maybe that's a rule to identify if it has a 128-bit memory interface. If it has a 128-bit memory interface, it means more performance, higher resolution, more details. You can definitely enable uh, anisotropic filtering. You can do that with any of the Radeon. It doesn't cost too much performance, but with the 128-bit interface, you can also play around with some anti-aliasing. So I'm still on the lookout for the best Radeon 9200 or 9250. Ideally, clock speed of around 240 megahertz with 128-bit interface and the RAM running at 200 megahertz, that would be the ideal situation. So despite all the negative reputation, if it has a 128-bit interface, it gets the thumbs up, and even with a 64-bit interface, just dial down the resolution of one setting and you will still get decent performance under Windows 98. The compatibility is not quite as good as with a GeForce or a Voodoo, for example, especially palletized textures and table fog, but many, many games will run really well. The uh, main strength of the Radeon cards is Direct3D. That's the main API you should be playing on this video card. OpenGL performance is behind that of NVIDIA and 3DFX. In terms of this project, this time I didn't have any issues, nothing negative to report. I will put resources down below in the video description, for example, drivers to the main board, the video card, the sound card, but also where you can get a copy of Windows 98. Because yeah, on the one hand, I do videos about old computers and classic games to bring back happy memories, but I also want to inspire you to build your own retro gaming PCs. And yeah, it's a really fun hobby and the more the merrier. And now I wanna hear from you in the comments. Hopefully one of you knows how I can progress in Shogo. Uh, it's a weird issue. I'm hoping it's just something technical that's easy to figure out. And if you have some game recommendations, also let me know. Ideally, the game is on GOG or Steam. I will not buy new games on Steam, but if a game is already on my library, then I can still try finding a no CD patch and getting it to work. Um, a game I recently got going was Max Payne. You just copy the game folder from, from the Steam installation and then use a no CD patch and off you go, it runs perfectly under Windows 98. In general, some of the digital releases, they're a little bit, um, for example, the audio, you might not get the soundtracks because of copyright issues or sometimes because they compress the audio and they use some DLL files that plays, that streams the audio files from the hard drive rather than playing it from a disc. So in that case, just go to archive.org, get the disc images and play them that way. There you go, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.